When we change our mindsets, we can change our outcomes. Save our lives from sadness, depression, and anxiety, thus giving us the freedom to live the life we want. Hi, I'm Stuart Haskin, founder of Get Save, and your host of the Movement for Change podcast. Hey, podcast, this is Stuart Haskin, your host for the Movement for Change podcast. Today is a little heavier subject. We're going to talk about anxiety and tolerance in a relationship. Let's see if Jack can give us some tips on how to move through these darker times in our relationship. See you soon. Thank you. Hey, Jack, welcome back. This is my favorite part of the week. Good How morning, Stu. How are you, <laughs> How you well, doing? Pretty. Nice doing to good? meet you. This is a great part of the week. Those Tuesdays yeah. are really good. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time. This part of relationships is so big for individuals. We we run on that as human beings, a lot of us. Some say, oh, I don't need it. And maybe they don't. And some say they don't need it and totally need it. <laughs> and so I... Right, right. And, and it's interesting that most of the time... It's innate in us to have a relationship. It's innate drive. It's, yeah. uh, and that's the interesting part that when a lot of times uh, uh, people ask me, when do you know when couples uh, cannot recover from their distress? How do you know yeah. when they can't uh, rebuild their relationship? And one of the biggest um, uh, places to look at is, do they have longing for each other? Right. Right. So... Because longing is innate for us. We long for to be with someone. And you're with, when you're with someone and there's so much hurt that longing is gone, then recovery in the relationship becomes really difficult. And I'm going to, I don't want to throw us off topic too much, but how do you, you know, what gets in the way of, of longing at times is looking at, over at the other side of the grass, right? The grass is greener and going, wow. I'm really longing to do that, you know, where they see friends traveling because maybe they're in a different phase of their life. They do different things. It seems like that's a little competition as well as keeping those relationships going, especially with all the social media we have. Everyone's life looks so amazing and people can sit and go, I'm in a rut. You know, I'm longing for something different. But yeah, yeah, that's a that's a well, most of the time of fantasy relationships, right? When- yeah. In your head, it builds up something perfect. It, it's like when you had a fling when you were young, and then you moved on and married someone else. And there's always a little thought in your head: What would it like? like what would it like, like if we would uh, stay together and, and yeah. build a relationship? But but then it may look like it would be great, but that's just all fantasy. That's not reality. Yeah. And and probably uh, the biggest. Uh, um, uh, maybe antidote to the to that problem where you look someplace else and to see the relationship is is better is to become explicit in your own relationship and bring it to awareness with your partner like you know something's going on i'm looking around and saying we're we're in a difficult place other people show up as perfect place and i'm getting all the stress i don't know what to do yeah. having that that ability to be able to share that with your partner gives you opportunity to develop the same thing in your relationship. Yeah, that's the truth hidden, and communication, right? The right, transparency. Well, right. But when this is a hidden inside of you, right? So mm-hmm. if you look at the some of the behaviors, there's kind of two two behaviors. One is the public behavior. That's we're talking with you each other right now. That's public, right? right? You can you can hear what I'm saying. I can hear what you're saying. But then there's a, pub, a private behavior. What's happening in our head? Nobody can hear this. Yeah. So your partner can't guess what's happening in your head. So if you're looking someplace else, if you have a little uh, fling at work where you just start noticing that you're getting attracted to someone, uh, which is perfectly normal in any relationship, sometimes it happens, right? Sometimes you're longing for something that's not available in your relationship and somebody else comes along and says, oh, well, I like you just the way you are. Yeah. Oh, you know, you're yeah. wonderful. You when was the me. last your wife told you you're wonderful, right? Yeah. Wow. But it, it happens. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But making, bringing it to awareness of your partner and sharing with your partner, this is what's happening. I just want to let you know. Because as long as the things are not secret, you can figure things out with your partner. Yeah. Once there's anything that uh, becomes secret and you're not exposing your partner to that and not letting them know, then that will escalate slowly until there is a... Yeah, and I I think that's, I mean, I'm going to not, again, 
drive, drive us down too far down the road, but it, there is a big thing of being judged and fear of hurting your partner too. And saying, Hey, you know, I noticed this person, they gave me this little twinge, you know, I'm, I'm just wanting to be honest with you, let you know, cause that could be taken a couple of different ways from your partner. You know, I mean, anger, Absolutely. sadness, hurt, you know, Absolutely. So maybe that's the way um, you deliver and, and package everything is to, at the same time, to reassure your partner that, that she's safe or he's safe, yeah. right? That you, you're safe. I, I love you. You're the most important person to me. I want to be with you. I don't want to be with anybody else. I'm just giving you a heads up. If we go to a party or anything else, I, I don't want to just pay attention to you. Okay. Right. So, so having that open communication and an open way of sharing what's happening at the same time, reassuring your partner that they're safe, that they matter to you, that you care about them, that when when they need you, you're there for them, will will inoculate your partner from being scared and worried and concerned. You know, this is there's a good movie. It's it's a it's not that old, but but yeah, maybe maybe ten years old, uh, with Richard Dreyfuss. It's called the uh, Coast to Coast. Okay. And it's an interesting movie because it has this type of communication where everything they say it's very explicit. Right. They don't keep anything inside. They talk about her affair. They talk about his affair. And they bring it on the surface. And anything that we shine the light on, we can manage. Hmm. What we can't manage is if it's in a dark place, there's no light. And then you have one surprise after the other surprise after the other surprise. That's, that's a relationship uh, killer. That goes your relationship to suffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a... <laughs> You know, I only see, you know, the people I talk to in life. And I know, again, that's a, it is the best, you know, when you see a couple that has just true open communication. I mean, almost brutally honest, where I, I cringe when I have a friend that they talk about that and their significant other says, you know, if you get in shape, we can go on more romantic trips. And I'm like, holy crap, how do you even <laughs> say something like that? But it's what he's thinking. Um, but it, it's interesting, you know, um, I mean, that's, that means that she feels safe. Yes. She feels safe to say that. And then that's, that's a big kudos to the guy that he's able to, uh, to be there and say, yeah, you know, I'm a bit overweight. I need to take care of things, but, uh, because she, he knows she's coming from a good place. And, and that's the thing when you come from your heart and have a little gentleness in it, maybe a little bit of love with it. It, it's how you package your messages, right? The way you package them, you need to you need to package them in in safety, in connectiveness, in love and care and support, and then you can deliver anything. And we're not talking about um, uh, constructive criticism; that doesn't work very well. But if something bugs you, um, saying it in a nice way always goes a long way. Yeah. Right, but but a lot of people they have this anxiety, internal anxiety, and that anxiety just um, drives them to say it more of an accusatory, blaming, labeling right. And and a lot of times, what we need to work on ourselves is to have an opportunity to um, to develop a tolerance. So, Jack, this maybe you can unpack the anxiety part first, and then we'll we'll reach into the tolerance. But anxiety means so many different things. I like to see what you see in your your world. You know, and that's a great question uh, because a lot of times most of the issues in the relationship are centered about anxiety um, and tolerance. That's kind of yin yang, right? And and I would say that anxiety is when it's hard for a partner to be present with their loved one without getting triggered. And that trigger typically um, connected to the past experiences. For example, experience in their childhood, experience with the relationship with other people, maybe romantic relationships that were long-term that ended up in, in, in a difficult separation. All of these become little trigger points or sensitivities within that person. So when they get triggered, the anxiety comes up and then 
on that anxiety, the action follows. Once anxiety is up, action follows. And actions are typically um, accusing your partner, blaming or defending yourself, protecting, uh, trying to prove logically. A lot of men, they like to go on the internet and send articles proving their point, right? Yeah. And uh, um, because, because there's no built-in tolerance, right? For, I'll give you an example, darkness, you'll be scared kind of going in, right? You'll have this anxiety even thinking about going to the dark room or maybe riding an airplane or, or taking a road trip. You'll have a, this anxiety built in. Well, there is a simple process to desynthesize us and then you just go with somebody else to the room a couple of times and go by yourself 10 times. And when you come out, your nervous system will recognize that there's no danger. And uh, and you're gonna you just built up your tolerance, and once you build up your tolerance, you don't react as uh, as violently, or you don't react as quickly, or or in a blaming way, or defensive way. Well, in in the relationship, we have very little tolerance training. Uh, we get together. We know we're different people, right? So you're naturally different than me. Right. Uh, your your wife is naturally different than you. Nothing to do, nothing wrong with your differences. You may like to uh, uh, sit at the table and and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, hit a fork on the plate to, with the, making the sound, right? And your wife can can get upset and say, "Why are you making this noise?" Right? Exactly. <laughs> or vice versa. Something can be one person can be uh, eating with their mouth open, the other person doesn't like that because they don't like the sound. Sometimes you're gulping too loud, right? And I'm taking food because that's what a lot of times happens. Um, but there's no tolerance built up to say, this is my partner. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing. They're good just the way they are. There's nothing for me that I have to correct them. They're adult. They're not little children. Yeah. And it's more of inward focusing and tolerating your partner's differences from more of a, a softer point of view. So instead of fighting differences between yourself and getting anxious and worried, you you learn to tolerate the differences, not only tolerate it, but also embrace that there are some differences, you know, and they're okay. And it's okay if you like your shirt and don't want to change it all the time because it's your favorite shirt. I mean, for men, T-shirts sometimes is like they wear the same T-shirt day in and day out, right? <laughs> all right. It's okay if your partner dresses up uh, when you're going out the way he wants to or she wants to, not the way you want them to get dressed up, right? Um, so that building that tolerance and in the moment of stress to be able to tolerate without blaming your partner or criticizing your partner, that's a big skill that uh, very few people learn. Yeah, and, I mean, it almost seems like acceptance as well. Um, yeah. Understanding. I mean, I think it's a very valid point. I do see it being hard when we're so different, you know, like, you know, you got this weird laugh sometimes <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of it drives me crazy, but they can't change it. That's just who they are. And, but it's, uh, so you accept it, tolerate it, <laughs> I guess. Well, Cause I mean, I, I didn't believe that. You embrace it the same way you embrace people from different cultures. The same way you embrace people who have different accents. You know, there's a big, there's what, there's a joke like, uh, you know, when a person has an accent, uh, sometimes people may joke about their accent, yeah. but they know two languages. You know, you know only one, right? I literally there's just a, told my son that yesterday. A kid made fun of his friend, and he uh, happens to be Russian. Oh, your grammar's bad. Well, you, you need to tell him, well, he can speak two languages. <laughs> you know? Right. So I'd rather have a little bad grandma and have two languages versus one. But yeah, it's funny you said that. That's just, that, that's just kind of funny things. But but be able to tolerate and embrace, for example, as simple as accents, right? If the person if the person has accent, it doesn't change them. It doesn't diminish them in any way. It doesn't make them less intelligent. It doesn't make them less than in general. Uh, but there's many other things, like like you say, if, if your partner has this weird laugh once in a while, make fun out of this, right? When I say fun, um, hug your partner and say I love you, right? That's a, make it very light. Don't fun, don't make fun at, at your wife, but just make it light. So it's, but if you get anxious because of this, it's not your partner's fault, right? Right. If she has this laugh, she lived with it for the through her through her life and. She survived, right? She got to where she is right now. 
but somehow we get triggered by this for whatever reason it is. Most of the time, maybe it's an embarrassment. Maybe it feels a little bit embarrassing when your partner does something. It's like sometimes you're in the restaurant and your partner talks to a waiter a certain way. You may get embarrassed and you yeah. start defending waiter instead of looking at your partner saying he's struggling right now. She's struggling. She needs help. You start defending complete stranger. Right. right. Um, so uh, building up, recognizing that in those moments when you get triggered, you get anxious, right? It's not maybe fear. It's not maybe sadness. It's just internal uh, nervous system is... Uh, a little bit able to elevate it and be able to develop the tolerance by uh, self-talk, for example. That's a good thing. Um, the other tolerance is to um, um, make it explicit. You know, sometimes you laugh like this and I you know, and, and I know sometimes it bothers me, but I don't, you don't have to worry about anything. You're, we're okay. You said um, it seems easier said than done, but yes. <laughs> so. But you know what happens that people are doing this anyway. Yeah. But they do it in a hurting way. That's the whole point. Yeah. You may be laughing, and the other person says, "Stop! Stop laughing! What's wrong? You know, can you not? Can you not do like <laughs> like <Yeah>. this?" Right? <laughs> but that's a hurting way. I'd rather them share it in non-hurting way, and loving way, and caring way. And 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 accept them just the way they are. I like the word acceptance. Uh, um, and the other thing is being present, present in the moment. Um, seeing your partner the way they are and loving them the way they are. That's a skill. This is not something that comes with us innate. And uh, a lot of times our internal structure is such that we reject a lot of things. But the goal is in the moment when you don't feel something comfortable or something's happening, your partner is doing that you don't feel comfortable. Uh, it's a self-reflection that we're looking at. What's happening with me? Yeah, I'm a little bit anxious. What's what's that about? Oh, I'm not sure exactly. It's just something gets triggered with me. Okay. So can I can I just stay in this place and let my partner to be who they are? Right. right. Well, we don't want to change. Self, because nobody wants to be changed. Everybody has the right to be safe. Boys, body, spirit. At Get Safe, we believe in four keys of leadership, empathy, integrity, inclusion, and community. That last piece, the community, is essential for us here at Get Safe. We believe in taking care of the community. If we care for something, nurture it, we become part of its growth. Get Safe is an agency that empowers a wide variety of groups, clubs, agencies, workplaces, all that make up our community that we are proud of. When we change our community mindset, we can positively change our outcomes towards a safer future with one another. Are you searching for a safe and supportive place to strengthen your relationships and improve your mental well-being? Well, look no further than Couples TLC Counseling, your trusted community mental health clinic right here in Fullerton, California. At Couples TLC Counseling, we believe that every individual, couple, and family deserves access to quality mental health services. As a nonprofit clinic, we are committed to providing affordable and compassionate care to our community. With our team of dedicated associate therapists, we offer a wide range of services, both online and in person. Whether you're facing challenges as an individual, struggling within your partnership, or navigating complex family dynamics, we're here to help. Our clinic has seven therapy rooms, each designed to create a warm and welcoming environment for healing and growth. Our experienced associate therapist will work closely with you to identify your unique needs and tailor a treatment plan that best suits you and your loved ones. Couples TLC Counseling also offers support groups specialized for those who identify as male, female, or non-binary, providing a safe space to connect, share, and grow. Additionally, our parenting classes and specialty workshops empower you with practical tools to navigate the challenges of parenthood and enhance family relationships. Don't wait any longer to prioritize your mental health and relationships. Take the first step toward a brighter future by contacting Couples TLC Counseling today. Visit our website at CouplesTLC.org. That's CouplesTLC.org to learn more about our services and schedule your appointment. Couples TLC Counseling, where healing and connection thrive.
Couples DLC Counseling does not provide emergency services. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, please contact emergency services or go to the nearest emergency room. You mentioned self-talk. Mm -hmm. How does that work in your head? Ignore the laugh, ignore the laugh. <laughs> or what does that mean? I don't know. It, yeah, well, in the behavioral world, you can associate with something good, right? And associate, yeah. if you have some negative uh, stimulus, right? Something that stimulates you negatively, right? Um, you can pair it with something positive. And eventually that stimulus is not going to be negative, right? So in this way, when something happens with your partner, you can hold your hand. And that 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 feels a little bit nicer so that you can close to your partner. Um, you can kiss her. You can tell her I love you. Uh, you can uh, um, do the internal self talk and says, "My partner, uh, it, it, good just the way she is or he is. There's nothing I need to do to change her. I want I want to accept her just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and that self talk eventually desynthesizes you." to your partner's habits that may not be helpful in the relationship. Now, there's a limit to this, right? So you, there's red lines that you may not want to tolerate that ever. Uh, infidelity, uh, drug abuse, alcohol, uh, addictions, porn addictions, gambling addictions, shopping addiction, hoarding, all of these things, they need help with these people, with these things. So there's internal structure or your core values they don't come to that category, right? So you don't start tolerating your partner getting drunk every day. Right. Well, it's good to have, I mean, it's good to have, of course, those are extreme limits, right? The, the boundaries yeah. aspect. And I mean, I like, I mean, I do, I like how you were saying you almost divert. Well, the laugh is kind of weird, but maybe she's cute when she does it. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you know, I it's someone something that in the beginning I embraced because it's a big hearty laugh, and now it's you know a hundred years later, and it's like <laughs> if that laugh happens one more time, you know, it's I mean I think has couples <laughs> around so long that some of the habits that we embraced in the beginning tend to become things that you know, and it, you know, and I was thinking when you were talking, I go. Even as a, a laughter thing, it might be something that's actually not your, and it's not your partner's issue, but internally something else is going on. So you're annoyed about something else, but you're just latching on to an outward gesture is what I was thinking. Right, right. And, and also your partner may behave a certain way when they're anxious themselves. Yeah. That may be triggering you. Maybe that gives you a clue that your partner is struggling a little bit. And, uh, but if we, if we think that we can change our partner, it's, I think it's a very um, difficult place to be uh, for anybody who, think, who thinks they can change another person. There's two factors here. Number one, nobody wants to be changed. Nobody wants to change their partner changing them. Yeah. And number two, to change yourself is very difficult. It's extremely difficult. And there's many different uh, ways that psychology has developed to enact change and empower change and uh, create motivation behind the, the change. But a lot of times when, uh, when you look long-term studies, two years, four years, six years, eventually it converges, converges back to the original behavior. It doesn't stay uh, unless you practice it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I was thinking. I mean, it's almost like a weight loss program. You see people make these transformations that are amazing and some just stay all the way through. This is the commitment I've made. I, I like who I am now and others fall back off the wagon, I guess. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I do believe in change. Obviously that's the name of the podcast, but it is, it's an active response that you have to continue to do. I mean, I go through it. I go, all right, now I got to get back in shape you know now i'm going to stick with this and sometimes i go a whole three days and then i fall off but sometimes i go with three weeks it's something that you know where your commitment level is right what uh, the, the the old saying that what you can't measure you can't change right? right comes along for example lola and i we've been recording our weight for years every single day you know oh. you get up <laughs> you go to scale you put it on the on the chart right yeah. it fluctuates you know, two weeks, it goes five pounds up, five pounds down. 
but it gives you immediate feedback. Right. Well, how to adjust today, right? At least for me. Okay, I see I got a little bit more right, great. So I'll eat a little bit less today, right? I got a little bit lower weight. Okay, great. I can indulge in, in a little bit more food today, right? Yeah. It gives us a very clean way to control it. And it's been working for us. You know, yeah. we don't we don't chase diets, we just give we measure something. Well, in a relationship, how do you measure health of the relationship? Yeah. Right? How do you measure it so you can adjust to it? Right now, people just live their lives, they do the best they can, they fight, they have good times. But there's one part of the relationship that a precursor to difficulty, and that is do you have fun with your partner? Yeah. Do you have fun in the relationship? Is there humor? Is there laughter? That's a precursor to the future of the relationship. And when you start losing that part of lightness, delight, fun, enjoyment, looking forward to have a good time together, then this is a kind of kind of you can you can talk to your partner and say, you know, we stop smiling or laughing. We don't hold hands. We don't throw it at, at each other. Um, you know, soap, uh, soap suds. Okay, <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't touch each other when we're washing the dishes. You know, everything is so strict, and, and that's one of the parts that uh, people can kind of monitor because it's easy to monitor. Yeah, and and a lot of people would say that when they start therapy is that we uh, we don't have as much fun, we don't have as much delight in our relationship. One partner may say, "I just want to make it." So that we're kind of light in our relation. We don't have that heaviness in our relation. And um, I mean, that's a very true statement because, you know, they always say life is short. Life's a short time. Make it a good time. You know, you might as well enjoy the now while we're here. And if you're not and you feel like there's hope, then, you know, let's go see Jack and let's talk yeah. about it and see if we can get back on track. I like your daily measurements, even in your head you measure i mean you measure weight but you can measure happiness and like you know today's going to be a good day and you set yourself for that aspect um, i like that i like what you're saying and not only that you can answer very simple questions there's a little questionnaire um that allows you to determine your state of relationship right and it basically says how do you feel overall about your relationship right and then you can say i'm from zero to five Right. Um, it's also ask what is the worst thing that happened this week between you and the relationship? What is the what is the best thing that happened between you and the relationship? What is the future things that maybe you both are worried about? Um, and give an opportunity with each other to kind of discuss that and say, hey, look what happened to us. We got a fight here. And because we disconnected from your partner, you can never recover recover the time that you lose. Right? Yeah. It's it's gone. If you don't talk to your partner for two hours, there's no makeup, right, yeah. right? Because time moves forward and that's the time you can't recover. And a lot of people say, I, I have this regret, regret that we spent so much time fighting. I have regret that we couldn't find a way to be nice to each other uh, or to, if we get into a fight, maybe be able to stop it and process it later. But still, even if we, had a fight to reconnect quickly and still be talking to each other and enjoying each other. Because if that flare up occurred, that little fight, it stands on its own. We don't have to color the rest of our day by that fight. But right yeah. now what happens, you have a fight in the morning, the rest of the day is colored by this fight and, and people just get farther and farther away from each other. Yeah, and half the time when you look back at it, it made no sense, it was silly. And then, you, like you were saying, regret. In our agency, we have only if we did something different. You know, we don't have to say that. And then the other point is, for years, you know, I teach these safety classes and recovery classes, and it's always if you think you can change somebody, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, you just can't change because you know we get a lot of individuals that are trying to, well, I can help this person be better, and then they get into this role play as a caregiver and then six months down the road they find themselves this is not a relationship i wanted to be in i didn't want to raise somebody you know and but yeah all very very good points again jack thanks for bringing up anxiety and tolerance and then we talked about how it blends into acceptance which is a key thing you know everything kind of i like a lot of the self-talk and 
kind of looking at that, almost stepping outside yourself and looking in and how yeah. bad is it or how good is it and how can I adjust it? Um, and also checking in with your partner. So you, you don't have to live in this private behavior, which is inside of your head. Yeah. Most men tend to do more private behavior. That means they they think on the inside. They feel the same emotions as women, yeah. but they feel them on the outside. And women can't see them. Because they can't see them, women get stressed and anxious and they start demanding, right? What's wrong with you? Why are you not talking to me? But the more they demand, the more men goes into this internal protective mode yep. and they stop talking again. And the more they stop talking, the more their partners start demanding. And there you have a perfect, perfect loop where you get stuck and there's no way out of it. Yeah. But, but accepting your partner and look at your own anxiety and what happens with you in the moment and also um, be able to tolerate some of the incompa incompatibilities. And they're not even incompatibilities, they're differences. They're yeah. differences that you were not there when your partner developed these differences. All right. They had their own track in their life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, and you had your own track in your life. There's no reason for you to change that in your partner. Yeah. You may grow up in a family uh, where everybody's quiet at the table, and then partner can grow up in a family where they talk at the table. Right. They're not your differences, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, that's some of the, some of the training that... Uh, each couple needs to go through. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I think it's another layer of just fortifying our, our relationship, making it stronger and everything. So we're at that time. I appreciate Jack helping us change mindsets to change outcomes and save lives through healthy relationships. I feel like that's what we're developing here and strong and safe relationships. And if you want to have a sign off, go ahead, far away. <laughs> well, I think uh, there's a few things, takeaway things from here is that um, being anxious about your partner's behavior is normal. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Yeah. But it's your behavior. And uh, to look at yourself and say, what is triggering you? And um, is that is that a hill I want to die on, right? Yes. And also to learn the, the, to tolerate. And, and tolerate does not mean bad toleration. That means to accepting your partner, just like you said, accepting your partner just the way they are. We're not there to change them. The only control we have is over ourselves. We don't have control over anybody else. Right. So embracing, accepting, and loving your partner just the way they are. Right. It's like Mr. Roger was saying, you're good just the way you are. We don't yes. need to change you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, for those, go back and check out Mr. Rogers, but it's uh, very well said. But thank you, Jack. I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on and I look forward to our next show. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Stuart. It was a All great right. show. Take care, Jack. All right. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast, Movement for Change. We hope that our discussion has left you with new perspectives and insights that can help you change mindsets and save lives. Please visit us at GetSafeUSA.com for resources, trainings, and if there's a topic you want to hear about or you have questions, please email us at info at GetSafeUSA.com. Together, we can make the change we want to see.